Welcome, welcome. And listen, if you don't see your friend, if you don't see your partner in crime, just call them up, text them and say, come on, sit next to me at Bible study. We're going to have a good time tonight. It's good to see everybody here. Elders, hey, minister. Hey, minister Nikki, minister Tyrone, it's good to see you tonight. Listen, <clears throat> tonight I am going to continue our dependency on God, but I'm going to take a little turn and I've been really, 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 really excited to take this turn. I had to lay the foundation I laid to begin to talk about what I want to talk about tonight. So Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to get into the word of God. Father, tonight we are like Mary sitting at your feet. I just say, speak, Lord Jesus. You have the ability to go beyond my words and minister to these, your sheep, God. Father, you know their addresses. You know where their heart lives, God. God, tonight I ask you to minister to the hearts of the people tonight. It'll cause change. Open their eyes so they can see clearly, God. Father, I thank you their ears are anointed to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and their heart is prepared to receive the word. God, for you said your word, the entrance of your word, it brings light. So God, tonight, I thank you for light that'll shine in the dark places of the people's heart. Thank you for enlightenment, God. Cause revelation knowledge to flow freely tonight, God. Father, even though we're on here on Zoom, I think you can go beyond the airwaves, Lord God, and touch anybody you need to touch tonight. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. And so listen, the last, I guess it's been three weeks, four weeks, we've been talking about our dependency on God, just depending on on God. Listen, we don't want the enemy having you out here thinking you don't need God or you can do this on your own. And we're getting into the God of me, you know, and I'm making it happen. Listen, everything God's called you to do, every vocation you have in life, can I tell you, you need God. Hallelujah. You ought to be praying every day. God, let my steps be ordered of you. Cause me to fulfill your purpose. Not, not listen, we get into trying to fulfill our own purposes. God never told you to fulfill your own purpose. He said, get in his purpose and find the path to his purpose. And so I just, tonight, I'm really going to try to um, just really minister three different areas that have, I believe is very timely um, for us in the body of Christ. And I hopefully you will be able to take something. I probably won't be able to get to all three, probably just two. <laughs> so listen, we have received many prophetic warnings um, in, in this year alone. It's really been the time if you've had your ear uh, to the prof to the prophetic airways. There's been a lot of prophetic warnings, a lot of prophetic insight. And listen, prophetic insight is necessary. God never wants his people to be in the dark. He always wants his people to have foresight, not necessarily, not as, it's not all the time to change anything, but it's to make sure that you are positioned correctly for what is going to happen. And so I know we've said some things over the pulpit. Some of you might know of some things and obviously there, there, there's been a pro prophetic word being released over and over again about famines coming. Look, you ain't even got to have your ear to the prophetic airways. You can turn on the news and hear that, you know, <laughs> all the crazy things that they're saying it's coming. And it seems like for the body of Christ and anybody who has an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, or if God is speaking to any of us, it really feels like to me is we're in the best of times and the worst of times at the same time. Like there's so much expectation of what God is doing in your life personally. I know in my life personally, God is doing some amazing things. Like, and it's because I have not taken back my faith. I'm staying in faith but I'm depending on God, not having faith in my faith, but having faith in his faith and depending on God. And so I am seeing God do some amazing things. Many of you have had the bomb testimonies about what God is doing in your life. But at the same time, there's this parallel seems like evil that is happening in our world. And I believe it's because God doesn't want us to get distracted, but be aware of what is happening and make sure that we are properly positioned in this time. Can I tell you, we've got to stay on the offensive. Do your best not to get on the defensive. 
what, what causes you to get on the defense is of being distracted and then you're behind and then you have a reaction to what's happening. When you're on the offensive, you're praying, you're asking God to show you, God, show me things about my family, my children. What's the will of God right now for my children, whether they're kids or adults, God, show me my children, show me my marriage, God, make sure I'm positioned right in my marriage. You know, asking God to show you and to reveal things to you, giving you instructions. And then, you know, your response should be able always be not my will, but your will be done because I think I said like two weeks ago or maybe last week God is calling calling audibles like you can have this like plan laid out and you should and we should have vision but God is calling audibles right now he is calling he's causing people to make turns he's causing people to turn around he's causing people to leap I've heard so many audibles that God is doing not just in our area but all across the country God is calling audibles and I think it's because he's positioning people for this next move of God amen and so tonight I'm asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you dimensionally what does that mean I want him to speak to you about the church globally but I want him to speak to you about you in your family. I really do. And that's what I've been praying all day. God, speak to your people and let your people have an ear to hear what you are saying. And so listen, I want to touch three areas tonight, I said, but I probably will only get to two. I want to talk to number one about hunger. I want to talk about hunger. Number two, I want to talk about the wisdom of God we need in this time. And number three, which we probably won't get to tonight, I want to talk about obedience. Again, hunger, wisdom, and obedience. You know somebody need to hear any of those, you better tell them, you better get on this call. Hunger, wisdom. How many people say, I need some wisdom? <laughs> wisdom and obedience. And listen, what I've been teaching about being dependent, excuse me, on God is a prerequisite to what I'm about to say tonight. Last week, I told you to ascend, to stay up. You know, there's so many things trying to get us to come down. You know, you gotta be like Nehemiah. I will not come down to stay in heavenly places, sitting with Jesus, seeing how he sees, keeping his perspective on any situation. I mean, I literally was sitting in a, the Maverick City concert having a blast. It was so amazing. Now, most of y'all were there. And God said, Pusha, sit down. I want to show you something. I want to show you something about the body of Christ. I want to show you where the church is going. I literally sat down. I had to be for 30 minutes. My family's like, you okay? I was like, shh. <laughs> and he just began to show me some things that I'm going to share with you tonight. I believe last week we ended it with Matthew chapter five. And we were talking about the B attitudes. And I said, listen, it's good to read the B attitudes because this is how your attitude should be. And this is what Jesus was saying. But I want to pick up in verse six. I'm going to read this out of the message Bible. Matthew chapter five, verse six in the message Bible says, you're blessed when you've worked up. Somebody say worked up. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you've ever eaten or you'll ever eat. He said, you're blessed when you work up an appetite for God. What I have seen in our time is people's hunger for the presence of God and people's hunger for God has seeped out. But then I've seen a, a shift as well in appetite. I've seen people have a different appetite, almost like where I'm at is good, but I want more, like almost like you cannot get full. Like I know there's something else for me. And so I believe by the spirit of God, there's a shift in appetite, a shift in the presence of God. And listen, if you do not have a hunger, if you feel like, you know, you are in a complacent time or you don't really have that hunger, get around people who are hungry. Number one, get around people who are dripping with oil, who are hungry and starve anything contrary to that. 
I always say that options are the enemy to hunger. Listen, when you eliminate your options in life and just say, God, you know, we sing it all the time. I just want you. I just want you. But you got everything else going on. I just want you. But you were earned by else. <laughs> but when you eliminate all of your options, your hunger will increase. Hunger, listen to me, excuse me, hunger is contagious. And that's what God was showing me at the concert. Oh my God, I wish I could show you what he showed me. It is contagious. Get around hungry people, especially if you are feeling empty. Every believer goes through it. Listen, do not get down on yourself if you don't feel like it. Remember, I read the scripture says God will give you the want to, but you got to work up an appetite for God. That means you got to starve anything that's keeping you from God. You've got to start to starve that stuff. You, I don't have to tell you what it is. I don't have to sit here and say, don't do this. I don't have to talk about sin. I don't have to, you know, in your nowhere, you know, even as I'm talking, you know, you like, girl, yeah, I know I need to, I need to stop. Yes, I need to, mm, I've given my ear too much that and my affections are here. And I do, I do, I do. I know that you know, because the Holy Spirit is your God. I'm not your God. He is. And so I know that he is dealing with you with some areas that you have to starve because we cannot afford in this time in our lives to be empty. We cannot afford to be dry in this time. Why? I'm going to tell you why you cannot be dry. And I know I'm just jumping in it. Dry places attract demonic demons. They dry places. I'm telling you, demons cannot exist in water. Think about the pigs. Remember when uh, when he, he cast all those demons out of the, that that man, and he and and it went into the pigs. What did the pigs do immediately? They went in the water. Listen, the the devil came to Jesus in the wilderness, in the wilderness. <laughs> So demons, do, they like dry places. They try to get in when things are dry. So you got to get to the well. You've got to keep yourself in a gusher. You, If you're feeling complacent, like, you know, I don't want to. And I said, we all go, get through it. There are some things that you need to do to work up your hunger and your appetite with God. So I will say you, to you tonight, stay soaked. Whatever that looks like for you, get soaked and kill everything not like him. That's what baptism is all about. That baptism pool is a grave. You listen, anything you, you want to baptize yourself in the, in the tub tonight. I dare you just got, just, you know, I baptize myself in the name of the father, son, and the Holy ghost, make that tub a grave <laughs> and work your appetite <laughs> up for God. Get to the well of Jesus. And so listen, so much is going to come and has come to distract us from our, from our vocation, from our callings in life. But then so much will come to try to get you to be so self-promoting. That is an enemy for this time. But when you are hungry for God and you are dependent on God, you start saying things like, God, I don't even care. I just want you. I want to be where you told me to be. I'll give you a little testimony. Yesterday, I was just yesterday morning, I was uh, a prophet of God really called me and they were asking me some questions just about my life and, you know, where I thought I was headed and you know, anytime people ask me those questions, I'm very slow to answer because I never want to seem like I have all the answers. I just like to follow Jesus, you know? So I just begin to share um, some things I believe the Lord is calling me to in this season. And she kept saying, woman of God. <laughs> anyway, and she, it was kind of funny. Y'all know, I, I, you know, I'll be cracking up with people. So uh, there's like not a piece of religious bone in my body. I just don't have it. But um, <laughs> so she's like, oh, woman of God. And anyway, and so she says, you know, most prophets, they speak to the church, they speak to the pastors, they speak to nations. And and I was like, you know, I, I believe I'm prophetic. Amen. Yes. I said, um, I've never really spoken to the nations, although I believe I do carry certain nations in my belly that I pray for that God has instructed me to pray for. Um, but yeah, I'm, 
you know, whenever God uses me, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me, you know? Um, and she said, she literally said to me, she said about this time tomorrow, God is going to show you who you are to the nation. She literally said, I'm cracking up. Oh, here comes a prophetic word. I receive it, Jesus, you know, whatever the Lord says. And I got off the phone and I shared it with my husband. She said some other things to me, but I really began to turn my heart towards God. I was like, okay, God, I don't want to brush off what the woman of God said to me. And so I began to kind of pray about it and acknowledge him in it and literally saying, God, I work for you. <laughs> Whatever you want me to do, I will do it. It was 9.30 last night, my phone rang. It was a woman of God that I know, but I'm not necessarily that close to. And she, she, she called me. She said, Pastor Portia, I need you. And this is what she said. She said, Pastor Portia, I need you in Pakistan. I said, what? She said, I need you in Pakistan on Monday. I said, you need me? <laughs> in Pakistan on Monday. <laughs> she said, the Lord put you on my heart to speak to the nations. There's a Pakistani network that, that ministers to 180 nations, 3 million viewers. God laid you on my heart to speak on Monday from two to three. I said, oh, okay. You don't necessarily need me in Pakistan. I could be on the Zoom. She said, absolutely. I said, okay, send me, I'll go. I, I will be there. But I thought it was funny. It wasn't even a whole day that just saying, God, whatever you have for me, God, not my will, but your will be done. I am going to just lay aside all my own thoughts and take on your thoughts and the phone rings. I'm talking about that type of surrender and that type of obedience, amen? So I was talking about staying wet, staying soaked. Listen, without hunger, there's no desire for more. Pastor Damon and I, we're really going to start ministering to you about more. And a lot of times when you think about more, you think about like more money, more houses, more, you know, all this material things. But no, we're talking about more of what God has for you. It may include all the provisions. Thank you, Jesus. But just going further and deeper in the things of God. Amen. And so you ought to have a desire for more because there's an invitation for more. And when you really grasp this, I promise you, it will bring you to your knees and you will begin to cry out for more. I'm telling you, there will be something on the inside of you to cry out for more. It humbles you. Instead of promoting you or you ascending on your own or putting yourself, it just humbles you. A lot of times when God uses my life in un extraordinary ways or unusual ways, I am so humbled. I want to literally go in the back behind a curtain and cry. Like I'm just so humbled that God would even use my life that way. The Lord spoke to me um, uh, last week and says he wants me to start training people in demonology, how to cast out demons. And I said to myself, <clears throat> okay, Lord, I said, well, I'm humbled <laughs> by that. Um, uh, but how do you want me to do this? <laughs> you know, how do you want me to make a call to train people? Because there's coming a time where all of us will have to cast out demons. I'm not necessarily talking about in the grocery store. I'm I mean, in the church. I'm talking about the grocery store. I'm talking about when they come up on your car in the parking lot. <laughs> you know? I'm talking about training you to know how to be effective in that realm. Amen. Because the gates of hell, they cannot prevail. Amen. And so you will notice in the upcoming times that your hunger will change your, I'm sorry, your appetite will change. It's almost like um, giving a baby and an adult baby food. The baby gets full, but the adult is still hungry. And I believe that we're in a time we're hungry. We're still hungry. Like the baby food is okay, but now we've got to have a different type of nourishment to grow at the level and the pace that God needs his church and his people to grow. So don't think it's strange if you get a little, I don't know, irritated or frustrated. Those type of things will bring you to your knees. Have you ever been hungry and been like, I'm hungry, but I don't know what I want to eat? Like, I'm hungry. And, and you know, your spouse, somebody, what you want to eat? I really don't know. Like you're, you're thinking about all the stuff you've tasted before, but I'm telling you, we're coming into a time where you haven't tasted this. <laughs> 
so there's no reference for it. <clears throat> you just know you're hungry. I'm hungry. My senses, I've sensed something. I want something, but I've not tasted it before. And I'm telling you, you're going to taste and see the Lord at a different level. And so the more you grow, excuse me, the nourishment has to grow as well. Let me read you a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse three. If I start coughing, y'all just pray for me. I ain't got nobody here to help me. So just be like, pray. Father, I just lift up Pastor Portia. You know how I get right here. You know, Father, heal me. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse three. I'm going to read this in the easy reading version. Can I also say, can I also say this, and it's, it's going to sound very familiar, but I'm, 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 I hope you hear me. The hell and the things you have gone through was not just for you. Can, it is time for you all to use that to whip the devil's tail. It is time for you to use that for the kingdom of God. The stuff that you ain't never told nobody, the, the, the cycles that are finally broken, the things you've gone through with people relationally, that was not just for you. Amen. Somebody grab that. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse three, in the easy reading version, even the financial breakthroughs. Listen, some of you all have had some serious impoverished things on your life and you have broken through that thing. Like you look around like God is good. It, had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? It is time to tell those testimonies. There is a sound that has to come out. We've got to start telling the testimonies. Why? Because it is the spirit of prophecy. I was in a drive through the other day and I literally felt that for this ladies. I want to go home. I, I don't want to be here. I literally had a prophetic word for her. Like she, I don't know if she was saved or knew Jesus, but I'm telling you, that's what God's doing. You ought to testify of the goodness of God. Amen. Don't keep it to yourself. If God give you a dollar, tell somebody, I mean, just begin to thank God. Look, I didn't have, and now I once was blind, but now I see. Thank you. Gee. Whatever God has done in your life, you want to open your mouth and begin to make God great in your surroundings, on your jobs, at the gas station, in the grocery store, whatever, whatever God prompts you to begin to speak for him, do it. All right. So Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse two, I'm going to read this time in the easy reading version. It says he humbled you. That's what has happened for some of us. He humbled you and let you be hungry. Let, allowed you to be hungry where you were just not feel like something is missing. I need something else. I don't know what's happening. And let me tell you something about hunger. Sometimes when you get so hungry spiritually, you begin to reach for natural things. When you don't know where to go, you don't have direction, or you're not sensitive enough to the spirit of God, you begin to reach for natural things like sex, you be, and, and food, I mean, all kinds of things. You find yourself in areas that you ain't never think you'd be in because God is humming, he's drawing you, and you begin to reach for natural things, and then you look up and like, how the heck I get here? How did I get here? The band, I'm telling you, pandemic did that for a lot of you. It was created to humble us, but some of us, ended up on the side of the road somewhere in things that we just didn't think we would end up in. How in the world you were hungry and thirsty and just passionate for God and now you don't even come to church? Look, don't forget coming to church. Don't open your Bible. Don't pray. Don't do anything and reaching for natural things to fulfill something that only God can fill. Y'all know Pastor P say this all the time. All of us all of us have Jesus-sized holes that only Jesus can fill. That's why I always say, get to the well, get to the well, get to the well. Anyway, it says he humbled you and he let you be hungry. God's letting us be hungry. It says, then he fed you. If you want anybody to feed you, you want God to feed you, but you've got to be in position to be fed. You remember what he told Elijah. He listened, he said there was a famine coming 
He told Elijah to get to a certain place and a raven will feed you. Had he not moved, when God said moved, he would have stayed hungry. And I'm telling you, you've got to move when God says move. You've got to be obedient when God says be obedient because your provisions are there. Listen, you're, you, you being sustained is where God has you. Wherever God tells you to be, be, because that's what God will sustain you. He says, then he fed you, listen, with manna, something you did not know about before. <laughs> People want to be filled with something they didn't know about before. Like, God, I didn't know. I didn't know about this before. He says something that you didn't know about before. It was something your ancestors have never seen. Could we be the generation that comes into things not even our ancestors have ever seen? It says, why did the Lord do this? Because he wanted you to know that it's not just bread that keeps people alive. People's lives depend on what the Lord said. That's very humbling. People's lives depend on what the Lord says. And the Lord put words in your mouth. What are you saying? Did he want people to know it's not just bread. It's just not natural things that will sustain you. Because how many know you can have all the natural things in the world and still be jacked? Have all the natural things in the world and still be unhappy? Something is missing. And so, you know, they've been prophesying a prophetic famine. I mean, they've been prophesying a famine. It's coming. But what's the great thing about famine? And I know many of you, many of you have called me and told me what the Lord has said to you and had the dreams and everything's so lining up. I love that, you know, God is saying some of the same things to people. I love when I hear a certain narrative that is the same. And I've gotten many texts from people in my own church just talking about what's coming, uh, greatness, <laughs> obviously, and in famine. But let me tell you something. If you read Genesis alone, you'll see that famine is set up to release you into greatness. Whenever there's a famine, there was a, listen, there was a leader that, think about Joseph, the greatness will come out of you. It is something about hunger that'll bring people to their knees and will humble them. And listen, <clears throat> you will be able to live in what will kill someone else. I'm gonna say it again. You will be able to live in what will kill someone else. Why? Because you God's people. <laughs> and he, you think about the plagues and all that stuff. Look, don't, don't it look like we're living in the modern day times? <laughs> and you're living in what might have killed someone else. And so I would say to you, where hunger is concerned, don't allow the enemy to trick you into being the problem or to accepting the problem or to looking into uh, things that are not God to try to be filled and, and, and mixing things that are not God. No, just, uh, just turn yourself towards him. I, literally just turn yourself towards him and let him fill you. If you are angry tonight, if you have, you're just angry about some things, take that anger and put it on, on your altar. Your altar might be on your floor by your bed. Your altar may be in your, if you are disappointed, take that disappointment to God and let him turn that disappointment into another passion. Or if you are frustrated tonight, if you, I'm telling you, take all those negative emotions, give them over to God instead of taking them into places that are going to do nothing for you, but invite demonic act Activity. You know, sometimes we, we're so frustrated or we're going through things and we're sad and we turn on sad music and we just like, oh, yes, 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 Mary J. Yes, yes, I feel just like you, girl. How about you take that into worship? 
How, how about you take that and pour out your heart before God and allow God to give you a word that will change your life forever. Come on, you are God's people. You are Christians. It's not a religion, it's an image. You are in the image of God. And so stop taking your image to the world and trying to take on another image. That is just going to drain you of your hunger and be complacent, especially when your emotions are jacked up, especially when there's so much pressure on you. Take that pressure to the altar. Take that pressure to the well. And I'm not talking about the church altar. I'm talking about your altar. I'm talking about right there in your room, right there. Take it to God and release it on God and watch what he does. <laughs> So don't allow the enemy to trick you. Come on, somebody say, God, increase my hunger. I'm going to work up a hunger and an appetite for the presence of God. I'm going to work up a hunger and an appetite for the voice of God. What, what is God saying to me now? I don't want to live on yesterday's manner. God says he gives you a daily word, daily bread. I want to eat from him every single day. Like, what do I need, God? I don't care. What did it give me? Whatever I need. Ain't nothing out here for me. I try it all. <laughs> I've tried it all. Can't no weed help me. Can't no drinking help me. I mean, what is that all giving you? Slurring, looking older than what you should look, putting you in places you shouldn't be. You might get a couple of kiki ha ha's for a little bit, but I'm telling you, Christians, you know that's not you. You know that's not you when you're in those surroundings and you're trying to fill yourself with something. You know on the inside, your spirit is like, what you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? And so you ought to yield to your spirit because I told y'all, you need your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions, it needs to hear your spirit speak. So sometimes you need to say what your spirit is saying. What are you doing? You are of God. You've got a calling. You're like, there's something you need to do in this season. What are you doing? Put down the bottle. Get out the bed. Put the weed down. I ain't doing not going to help you. It's not going to help you. Sorry. <clears throat> I ain't got my husband here to tell me to be quiet and calm down. <laughs> and so hunger. Somebody say hunger. I'm going to be um, speaking more on hunger. I just wanted to introduce that thought and get you to work up something, you know, um, just, you know, God does a lot through dreams and visions. I'm praying that God shows you like visions with your eyes open and gives you dreams at night and just not just, just for the body of Christ too. And, and for your family, maybe even your job, like God can speak to you about your job and tell you, go tell the owner. He has done that to me before spoken to me about my job. And here this little old black girl got to go tell the, the owner what thus said the Lord, but thank God that morning, I read, I read Joseph, you know, so I said, okay, I, I, I can do this. I can do this. And she was born again. I didn't even know it. She was born again. And she was like, thank you so much for being obedient to God. I was like, oh my God. So you just have to be where God will have you to be. Amen. One of the next things we need in this season as we work up our hunger, Lord Jesus is wisdom. We need wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. We need wisdom. Listen, <laughs> listen, hunger will stir up your ability to see and to hear revelation. It will tell you what's coming, but wisdom will tell you what to do about what's coming. And so when you have prophetic insight, you have revelation, it'll tell you what's coming, not just globally, but for you. But wisdom will tell you what to do about what's coming. How many people need, even right now, need to know what to do? Like, I need to know what to do about this financial transaction. I need to know what to do about this business. I need to know what to do about this big head little boy. I need to know what to do about this surgery. 
Like I would, somebody was praying. I didn't even know they were praying about a surgery. And you know, they were just like, I'm not having a surgery. God's going to heal me. I'm not having a surgery. I went to walk and talk to the Lord. And the Lord told me to call somebody, tell them they need the surgery. Like, because they asked God for wisdom. And so wisdom will tell you what to do. You might know what's coming and we can talk about what's coming all day. Even the great things coming. God said this and God said that and God said this, but what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? I said, we are professionals at closing doors. We are professionals at coming out of something, but we have to get more wisdom on how to step into the new. We've been talking about the new since 1920. Oh, but all things are new. God going to do a new thing. Glory. But you ain't seen no new thing yet. You ain't walked into no new thing yet because we don't know how we need the wisdom of God to access the new. And so... So listen, when you are elevated or even promoted in any industry or any any season in your life, you need the wisdom of God to operate at new levels. I'm not talking about natural wisdom. You know, James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Guess what you need to do? Ask God, I need wisdom. I need wisdom about my next season. I need wisdom on how to, okay, I'm leaving this job and I'm coming home to start this business, but I need your wisdom. Wisdom. You, I'm talking about insight from heaven that we lack in knowing what to do because his wisdom causes acceleration. You know, I need wisdom in this area in my marriage. It's much like a word of wisdom. You know, a word of wisdom, it goes into your future and it takes a snapshot and brings it back. And listen, the word of wisdom, it starts at the finish line. That's what a word of wisdom does. When you release a word of wisdom on somebody or there's a word of wisdom in church, it's about the future. And so a lot of times wisdom takes a snapshot of the future. It's at the uh, the finish line and it brings it back to you and tells you how to do it or the next steps. It may not always give you 20 steps, but it'll give you the next step. Amen. Listen, wisdom is an aged word. Wisdom is aged. When people are older and dying, they release a lot of wisdom. I remember somebody very uh, important to me died. I went to go see them in the hospital before they passed. And the one thing they said to me, they were like, come here. And I'm thinking I'm about to get like this, this great wisdom. And he said, because he knew, you know, I'm pastoring, I'm, I'm running, I'm traveling, I'm busy. He said, nothing else matters but your relationships. <laughs> I was like, okay. How do you know that was wisdom? He's like, listen, love your husband. I don't care how many people you saved out there in the world. If your husband is hungry, you are not successful. He should be eating at home, not nowhere else. Like literally just giving you wisdom for your relationships. (laughs) And so wisdom gives us strategies. When you're praying, uh, for wisdom, it gives you kingdom strategies, even for, listen, your marriages, um, your single life, your children. Like if you're single and you're desiring to get married, all of a sudden you have this strong desire to get married. I, I've, I've sensed a lot of people who didn't want to get married before all of a sudden having a desire to get married, I believe it's for kingdom purposes. It's for kingdom strategies. And so you just need the wisdom where to be. Come on, somebody, where to be and how to be and how to look and how to carry yourself. Like he might tell you, comb your head, put some lipstick on. I mean, you know, (laughs) man of God, he, he might tell you to go a certain place and she sticks out. You need wisdom. (laughs) Look at Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 i'm gonna read this in the passion translation it it says it says blessings pour over the ones who find wisdom that denotes it's a little bit of seeking you gotta do to get wisdom it says for they have obtained listen living understanding you know the scripture says in all you're getting get understanding it says as wisdom increases God, increase our wisdom. Come on, that's a good prayer. God, increase our wisdom. As wisdom increases, 
a great treasure is imparted greater than many bars of refined gold. It is more value. It is a more valuable commodity than gold and gemstones, but there is nothing you desire that could compare to wisdom. Jesus. Wisdom extends to you long life. When you got wisdom, you live longer. In one hand, listen to this, and wealth and promotion in the other hand. Can I tell you it is time for many of you to be wealthy? Forget what you heard. Keep your mouth off of wealth. Listen, God says, I need you to be wealthy for kingdom purposes. It's time. Wealth and promotion in the other. Out of her mouth flows righteousness and her words release both law and mercy. Ooh, I ain't got time to do that. The ways of wisdom are sweet. Always drawing you into a place of wholeness. Anybody don't feel whole? He says wisdom will draw you into a place of wholeness. Seeking for her, we ought to seek for her, brings the discovery, listen to this, of untold blessings. For she is the healing tree of life to those who taste her fruits. Look at what wisdom does, y'all. Look at all the things. Extend your life. Listen, <clears throat> brings wealth and promotion is sweet. It, it shows you untold blessings. It brings healing. All the wisdom. Wisdom will tell you, don't eat that. Don't eat it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You were going to be on the toilet all night if you eat it. Listen, y'all know. Y'all know wisdom has done it. You know, you'd be like, no, God bless my food and bless my water. And wisdom be like, don't you drink that. Don't you drink it. You're going to be bent over. It'll tell you that. Wisdom. <laughs> and so we really need wisdom in this time. We need wisdom um, for our next steps and operating in the new. I believe as our hunger increases, wisdom will be leading. Um, I believe that you'll see so much wisdom in the people of God, the untold blessings, the hidden things. And we won't take credit for it to be to God, be the glory because God told me to do that or God showed me that or God ordered my steps or God told me to go this way or God told me to turn around. You know, men of God, God may be just doing some things on the inside of you about your families in how to lead your families. You ought to have your ear, I would say to the ground, but to heaven, <laughs> asking for wisdom, especially when people get crazy. We know, well, you know women get crazy. You know, we get off sometimes. We get sick of y'all, we get off. And so, you know, you might need some wisdom on how to deal with your families right now. You feel like there's something that God wants to do. You ought to be seeking God. But listen to this. This is a par parable that it always gets me. Every time I read it, I get um, new revelation. It's parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. You all, most of you probably know, it, but I'm still going to read it. From In uh, Matthew chapter 25, <clears throat> it says, then the kingdom, verse one of heaven, new King, Ch version, new King James version, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. It says, now five of them were wise and five were foolish, all going to meet the bridegroom. One thing I keep hearing that there's a remnant. God is calling a remnant. Not everybody is remnant, y'all. Not everybody's remnant. It says, now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Don't be a fool be wise. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. <laughs> oh my God. And at midnight, a cry was heard, behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, say, no. Let me tell you, there's power in the word, no. Lest there should not be enough for us in you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, listen, the bridegroom came. 
And those who were ready went in with them to the wedding and the door was shut. Let me tell you some distinctions or some takeaways because there, I think I told y'all in one message that we would see in these times distinctions in the kingdom of God. So here's some distinctions out of this parable. They all have the same intention of having their lamps burning. It looks like they're all doing the same thing. They, it looks like it. they have the same intentions doing the same thing. They're all going to meet the bridegroom, but when you, when you, you're going to see a separation in two categories. Five were wise and five were foolish. Wisdom separates you. You hear me? Wisdom from God it separates you and causes distinction. Now, I mean, it's something that he said about going to school, getting all your degrees and all that else. But this is not the type of, I'm not talking about that time of sparks. I'm talking about the wisdom that comes from heaven. It separates you. Foolish took no oil. Wise took oil in the vessels with them. But you don't see, readily see the wisdom in operation until midnight. Until midnight is when you see <laughs> the wisdom at the darkest times. Come on, somebody. And you know we're coming on. We are in darkest times. At the darkest times is when you see the distinction in the separation. I hope y'all are hearing me. The wise told them to buy for yourselves in great moments, actions don't distinguish us, but wisdom does. Wisdom distinguishes us in great moments. The wise virgins knew they didn't know how long it was going to take. Let us take extra. The foolish didn't think far ahead enough. There was no vision. There was no vision. Without a vision, the people perish. Are you ready for where God can take you? Are you ready currently for where God can take you? Are you being prepared with the wisdom of God? These wise versions said, we have oil, but we're not responsible to prepare you. Don't get, listen to me. Here's, here's a gem. There's a gem. It's a gem. Don't give away your supply in places you were not designed to. I see that so much. Oh my God. That's why we got to be where God is for you. Do not give away your supply in places that you were not designed to be. Don't even be in places you were not designed to be. You'll end up foolish. You'll end up talking like them, looking like them. And that's not even you. Don't let people wear you out. No is a complete sentence. Complete sentence. So let me tell you this, this is what wisdom would say, and especially for those of y'all a part of this church. Some people will not have the capacity for your next. Let me say it again. Some people will not have the capacity for your next because there is a next. And, and God is going to call you to cause you to do things that may be unusual. And let me tell you, and I don't like talking about haters, but there are haters out there. It, or, or God may call you to step down, to step up. I mean, I see God doing all kind of repositioning, all kind of things in people's lives. And so it's your next and, and you can't let anyone else have anything to say about it. Listen, they also, when God puts something in your heart, here's some wisdom. Don't tell everybody because they may lack discretion. Sometimes it's not time to release things. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Because I know God is saying crazy big things to some of you. And you've got to be careful who you allow in your circle, who you allow close to you, because they may lack discretion and they don't know how to prepare. They don't know how to be prepare. They don't know how to take extra oil with them. So you can't help everybody. You help who God's called you to help. The wisdom of God will tell you. There are times where God be like, ah, ah, Portia, because my heart is just like, I want to help everybody, trust me. <laughs> and there are times when God be like, ah, ah, I, I mean, nope, don't go. Don't go over there. Nope, don't. 
That's the wisdom of God. <laughs> so listen, when you're dealing with wisdom, that you'll often see in Proverbs, and Proverbs is something that you should read um, regularly. If you could read a Proverbs a day, especially right now, that would be really good. Just every day read a proverb and getting wisdom. When you're reading it, you'll see a lot of times you'll see prudence. And so prudence is a little different than wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do. Prudence is knowing when to do what to do with who to do it with. So you could ask for prudence and wisdom. You, you can be in the know. You can know when to do and who to do it with. If you look at the scripture, it'll show you like, who am I supposed to do? I feel like I'm supposed to start a podcast. I feel like I'm supposed to go in business. I feel like I'm, I mean, I've gotten so many invitations to do um, book collabs. The Lord always says no. He might not say no in my next season, but he always tells me no. Like, but can you imagine if I wasn't asking him? Can you imagine like, oh, that's an opportunity. Oh, she big time. Yes, I want my name with her. I want my name to be great. Oh, such and such, you know, and people will say, she asked you to do a book. You didn't do it. I said, the Lord said no. <laughs> if God say no, he tells you, prudence tells you who to do it with. And so there might be opportunities that come they say no. And sometimes you hear about this next week. It's just about your obedience. It's not necessarily nothing wrong with that person. It's just about will you do what God tells you to do? Wisdom discerns things, situations, and people around you. How many people are asking God for a greater level of discernment in this season? I know I am. Uh, just a greater level of to be able to discern what's around me situations around me, people around me. God has put me in places of uh, people I don't know and newer people, but I'm asking God for greater discernment. Wisdom discerns things. Listen, wisdom seeks early. Wisdom never refers to a clock or cal calendar. Early means when it's needed, before the problem or situation shows up. When does it show up? It shows up early. Like a situation shows up and you already know what to do because wisdom is already spoken, okay? Wisdom, it gives you standout qualities. You can be 17 years old with wisdom. The scripture says, I'll give you wisdom beyond your years. <laughs> so wisdom doesn't have to be about age. He can give you, you can be a, a minister of the gospel at, at 22 years old, mm -hmm. preaching the gospel with so much wisdom because wisdom goes beyond a number. God can fill you with wisdom. I was had the opportunity to speak to a, 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 a you know like a woman of God, a prophet of God, and I'm thinking you, they, they, their face look young, but I'm like, what was coming out of their mouth? Like, God be sixty, you know? I'm just like, oh my God! I said, I just happened, you know, I hate when people do this to me, but I did it. How old are you? <laughs> like, how old are you? <laughs> so I said thirty-one. I said thirty-one, ma. God, you a powerful 31 year old. You ain't been on the earth that long, but you was powerful. You know, sidebar, we're getting at the age now. I'm getting at the age now where like your doctors and stuff are younger than you. Is that not weird? Like, that's so weird for me. Like, I went to my doctor's appointment and I, I have a new doctor and I walked in and I'm looking at her. I said, are you my doctor? She was like, yeah. I was like, I'm about to do it. Oh my God, I'm about to. How old are you? She, she told me her age. I said, wow, I'm at that age now where, you know, these people are younger than me. I wanted to walk out, but I didn't. Wisdom gives you standout qualities. Listen, 1 Chronicles 22, 12 to 13, write it down. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12. Wisdom gives you prosperity. You need the wisdom of God in your money, especially now. You need the wisdom of God in your money. Your money can be in rooms that you're not in. Like you, when God tells you to sow, sow. When to, God tells you to give, give. Listen, you need stay, you need a kitty. You need um, discretionary funds. Like, and so you need, you might be like, well, 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 pastor, I could barely pay my bills. Wisdom will get you in the overflow. I'm telling you. Wisdom will get you in the overflow. Wisdom will tell you 
what to do when you're in financial crisis or like I like to say financial warfare where it seems like everything is taking your money like what in the world is going on wisdom will break in that thing and when you do what God tells you to do I don't know about you but sometimes in those times God will tell me to sow and I'll be like <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> you know, you just be like, you just gotta be obedient because he's like, whoo, okay, you know, because he sees that he's trying to get something to you, but he needs, you need to be obedient. You have to be obedient to what God is telling you to do, especially God in the financial arena. I'm telling you, I, I have, the Lord told me to join this investment group and I, let, let me tell y'all something. I do not like things like that. I don't like pyramids. I don't like, I just, I'm past peace, just my personality, but he told me to join this investment group. And I got in the group and I just kind of had a little attitude, but he told me because he told me to be there. I was there. And when I tell you the wealth of wisdom, and it's so funny, the, the investment group wasn't really about, it was about investing, but it was just about wisdom where money is concerned in this season. So it's a very prophetic group where cash was concerned. And I'm just, every week I'm setting myself to do exactly what they're saying. And I'm telling you for weeks, I was like, okay, God, why do you have me here? And then boom, I see why you had me here. And so you just, wisdom of, cause you to be in the right places at the wrong time. It gives you prosperity. Wisdom pre preserves your life and all that you possess with it. It's preservation, it's preserving. And you all know the scripture, wisdom comes in the multitude of counsel. But listen, in one of the translations I read, counsel means trade secrets. What? What? Did y'all hear that? What? Trades. I was like, God, you were so good. Like God controls everything, y'all. Like for real controls everything. Trade secrets? Trade secrets. That's why we have to be asking God for wisdom. It is time for us to own. Okay. Own a lot. It's time for us to own a lot. Okay. And so we need trade secrets. There is so much harvest due to us, black people. We need trade secrets. You hear me? Let me get off my horse. Okay. Wisdom gives you an appetite to learn more. And if you read the Proverbs, it's, you'll see that wisdom has like traveling uh, companions. You'll see peace. You'll see joy. You'll see confidence. Wisdom gives you confidence. Wisdom brings honor into your life. Wisdom instructs you. It gives you the ability to defy odds. If you read Proverbs 21 to 22, if something is against you, looks like you're going to lose, you ought to meditate on that. And it causes you to defy odds. We all know that wisdom helps you build your house. It's a foolish person that tears their house down, but wisdom helps you build your house. Listen, Proverbs 120 says, wisdom gives you a voice. It gives you a voice. And so in this season, we don't want to be part of the problem. We want to be the solution. And we're going to be the solution because of the voice of wisdom. So I started off talking about hunger because you won't seek wisdom if you're not hungry for God. You won't seek wisdom if you're just complacent, all about yourself, all into you. Just like, you always love me. I'm this today. I need you to die. Like it is time for the greatest death that you've ever experienced in the Lord Jesus Christ. I need your flesh to die so that we can really do some things, so we can really move. I'm telling you, God, there's a, the invitation to move more is through death. I'm telling you, the invitation to more is through death. And that's why he's calling for obedience in this season. Amen. And so I pray tonight, you heard a little bit that, you know, what were your takeaways? What did God say to you? You ought to write them down. You ought to put it in the chat because you ought to meditate on it. Like God, I, I, 
I will increase my hunger. Get around hungry people. Get around the water. Stay out of dry places. If you're dry, get to the water. <laughs> Demons can't be there. Get to the water. Get around people who are dripping with oil. You might think they're weird. Just rub up against them a little bit. Getting conversation, getting godly conversations and cause it to ignite something on the inside of you because there is something on the inside of you. And as you are uh, having your appetite or increasing your appetite for God, pray for the wisdom of God for right now in your life. God, we need your wisdom. Show us, teach us, you know, give us, he's going to give you foresight, but now what to do? What should I do in, in the fall months coming? Should I, um, should I stack up food? Should I start a garden? Should I, what should I do? That's what wisdom will tell you to do. Should I uh, change my eating? Should I stack this money? You know, unexpected income coming to house, five, six, seven thousand grand. What do I do with it? Should I put it in the market? What should I do? Y'all should have caught that five, six, ten grand coming. To your house. You better learn how to. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, you should have caught that. I received that unexpected income coming in my house. And then what should I do with it? Should I put it in the market? Should I sow it? What should I do with it? Should I put it in my savings? That's what wisdom will tell you to do. I told somebody today that every dollar in your house should have a mission connected to it. What am I supposed to do? Money has a mission and money can go further than you can. And so you ought to be sending yourself on a mission, like putting your stuff out there on a mission. Wisdom will tell you how to do that. Listen, I pray that you got something out of this. I pray I didn't go as far as I wanted to because I think that we are going to be dealing with this soon on a Sunday morning, just sharing some things that um, God has shared with us regarding these three subjects, hunger. Oh my God, an increased hunger just wanting to be with God, wanting to be in the presence of God, wanting to be with the people of God. You know, if you have an attitude, you're like, I don't feel like being bothered. Ask God to help you. I'm, I don't want to get on you because I've been there. So I don't want to get on you. I don't want to make you feel condemned, but push yourself, get yourself out that house, push yourself, be obedient. If I don't, there are times where I had to push myself and lay on the altar. Y'all know my testimony. I had to push myself and lay my tail on the altar. Just God, I am surrendered. I'm obedient to you. Cause I know there's a spirit in the earth telling you, don't feel like you ain't got to do all that. <laughs> it ain't, it don't require all that, you know, <laughs> stay home. Don't you know, you know, you know, put, I'm telling you defy that push up against that. Like, don't, you don't owe your flesh nothing. Don't, don't feed your flesh flesh, feed your spirit, man, don't feed your flesh and then get the wisdom of God for the areas that you need the wisdom of God on. Amen. So father, I just thank you for your word that was released tonight. God, we just thank you. And God, even now we just asking you God to increase our hunger for you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for your presence for the people of God. Lord God, visit. I thank you for visitations, visit them in their dreams. God, Visit them while they're awake. Open their eyes, Lord God, so they could see into the realm that they've maybe never seen and to show them, God, that there's more with them, God. Show them the angelic forces that are all around them, God. God, cause there to be a stirring in their belly, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you even put in an anointing on some of their vocal cords to speak with thus saith the Lord and giving utterance to the word of God, Father. I just thank you for an increased hunger for the people of God. Lord, I thank you even for it a change in appetite that's happening, God. I thank you that we're eating from different tables in this season and being nourished in different ways, God. Thank you. <clears throat> We're tasting and seeing that you are good. God, we just ask for wisdom. We ask for wisdom. You said, if any man lack it, let him ask of God. So Father, we're just asking for wisdom in the affairs of our life and our careers, God, and our finances, God, with our families. We're asking you for wisdom because God, we know that you do all things well. God, and you do all things beautiful in its time. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen tonight, when we're receiving tithes and offerings, I just want to um, give you a scripture that I do now that I got from my little group <laughs> that I, 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 I literally 
confess every day and meditate on every day. Proverbs eleven twenty four says, the world of the generous, come on, say, I am generous. I am generous. It says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. My world gets larger and larger. It says, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Come on, say, I am not stingy, but I am generous. I am generous. Hallelujah. Listen, when you are generous, the Bible says that your world gets larger and larger. If you want to sow into the kingdom of God tonight, you should do that. The um, instructions are on the screen. Obviously, there's two ways, two ways to get vcmicc.org and hashtag vcmicc to 22300. We thank God for your gifts into the kingdom of God. We thank God for your seed tonight. Listen, I just have a few announcements, just a few. One, don't forget to register for, or have your young people register for the Charisma Conference online. They can go to vcmi.org and register for the Charisma Conference. Amen. Registration is open for the Charisma Conference. Also, Sunday closes out Father's, our Father's Day month. <laughs> and so you want to, if you haven't brought your dad, Bring your dad on Sunday. We're going to have donuts and breakfast for the dads. There was no buy-in for the cookout. And so we weren't going to waste our time on something y'all didn't want. And so there was, there was no buy-in for the cookout. So we decided not to do There's too much work to go into that. And so we're going to do donuts for dad. Um, and I mentioned also ministering to 180 nations on Monday. I will be sharing that information. It's going to be on Monday. Uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to watch, I will ask for your prayer. Um, they've always asked me, which the word of the Lord for Pakistan? <laughs> what? <laughs> but I know God will give it to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so I'll ask for your prayers. But that is it. Hallelujah. I thank you all for joining us tonight on our midweek Bible study. I will see you on Monday. Come on, lift your hand. Say, Lord, I love you. With all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, look to your right. Say, neighbor, I love you as I do myself. And you are dismissed. We will see you Sunday. Mwah.